right, let's talk one bag. So I actually did a write up of this on the website. Definitely go check it out at onebagoneworld.com. It's one of the only two backpack reviews up at this point. Um, I've tried far more than that. So if you have any questions, throw a comment below and I'm more than happy to get back to you. You can also DM us on Instagram, but check out the review there. If you have any questions, let us know. I'm just gonna show you what I put in this bag today. So I'm going to start kind of um, category by category. Um, I'm not going to weigh out each individual piece, but I will weigh out the total container. So I do have a kitchen scale right over there. We're only taking 40 liters and a lot of low cost carriers these days have about a uh, seven kilogram weight limit, um, which is about 15, 16 pounds. Sometimes they can up that to 10 kilograms if you buy like an additional kind of tier. Um, so we're kind of going to be a little over 10 kilos total, uh, but the goal is that I can take one of these pouches out just put in my pocket and then get under the tier. So, so first thing first is tech. This is an Ultrabook. It's a Lenovo X1 Carbon ThinkPad. It only weighs two and a half pounds. So it's the reason I went with it over a MacBook Pro, even though I really do like the MacBook Pros, especially their screens. Um, this just, you know, it's super small, super compact. Uh, it's got enough ports, you know, to do what I want to charge it plug in an HDMI if I want to hook up to the TV in the hotel room, something like that. So two and a half pounds for tech. And then this is my tech pouch. Um, and one thing to note is I'll be doing camera stuff separate from tech. Uh, obviously, you know, this camera's currently in use right now, um, but I will show you kind of what I have. So for tech, this is pretty much all I'm bringing. I do have um, a power cable uh, in the bag, which I'll pull out in just a sec, but so first thing first, I have a mouse, you know, ergonomics are somewhat important to me. And this is the most ergonomic mouse, but I do like the fact that it is flat you activate it, you just pop it up like that, and then you can, you know, move it around like so. The hard drives, so we have a lot of hard drives, four terabyte, two terabyte, one terabyte. Um, some have like virtual machines that I like to play around with. I'm on them, most of it will be used for photo stuff. I also have a little Bluetooth speaker. There are kind of mixed opinions on music, but it's something that Brian and I both love. Pretty much waterproof. It is micro USB, which is the only downside. I know they came out with a new version. I was actually talking to a friend about it. It also has an aux plug here as well, if you don't want to use Bluetooth. So. One of the things we wrestled with was um, toothbrush, what kind of toothbrush we're gonna bring. And we decided that since we're not really gonna have a, you know, a dentist with a checkup every six months, we decided to bring our electronic toothbrushes. So this right here is just something I found on Amazon. It's a USB charger. So it actually powers off of our power bank or it can work off of our laptops. And it's, um, she has the uh, Sonicare and I've got an Oral-B, but they both use the same base. So we've tested this with both and it works great. Also, I'm wearing my uh, watch, which I got recently. It's the Fossil Gen 6. So one of the reasons I wanted a watch is so I could have Google Maps on my wrist as I'm walking around. I want it to kind of be a little more hands-free, especially now that I've got a bigger smartphone. You know, back in the day, smartphones were a lot smaller and now they're basically mini tablets. So I don't want to, you know, just have it on my hand. So anything I can use with the watch I'm going to. Brings me finally back to this. This is just a, a watch charger. I hate how they're all proprietary, um, but what can you do? You know, it does its job. It's USB-A, so it can plug, uh, just charge off my power bank or off my laptop pretty easily. I've I've got here um, just a car charger. So we are running a couple cars. We've used it before, it's pretty cool. Lastly, I'm mostly a USB-C to USB-C guy, but I do have one USB-A to micro USB. So again, this charges off of micro USB. I've got the camera, which I'm using right now, which also charges off of micro USB. So just having one of those is kind of nice, even though most of my gear is USB-C. That's kind of a good segue. I do have a kind of dongle pouch. So I do have like a USB-C splitter. So if I want to put in like USB-C headphones into my phone, but also charge it at the same time, I can do that. Might get rid of that. I'm not sure how long that'll last. A USB-C to micro USB. I also have a little um, 128 gig thumb drive um, that can do USB-C or USB-A. I've got a USB-C to USB-A adapter here. Last couple things, I know this is kind of weird. Um, oh, when we get to the torture kit, maybe this will make more sense. Uh, I have a AA powered um, kind of styler from Gillette. I didn't really want to just constantly swap out AA batteries, so we found some USB-C rechargeable uh, AA batteries. So these are pretty cool. It works really well. I've already tried it out a few times, so I'm just bringing it back up just in case something happens to that one, although I don't really anticipate that happening. Just some SD cards. These actually should go in the camera kit. I'll probably make a note to move those over. I've got two more of those adapters, USB-A to, to USB-C this time though. And that's it. So all that fits in like this little pill bag. I recommend these pill bags. They're pretty sweet. You can fit a lot of stuff in them and it's just easy to keep things organized. Last couple things are are very techy. So ethernet cable. Also I have a HDMI cable. We've used this so many times. Anytime we go to a hotel and there's a TV. So all that said, let's pack it back up. This is the pouch. It's just a REI liquids pouch, but I like it because it's uh, got a clear front so I can really see everything that's in here and just grab it really easily. I will show the other things that are 
going with my laptop real quick just for power. I do have a six foot USB-C cable. I just really like a longer one, especially for powering the laptop. I got this off of Amazon. I can't remember the brand, but it's a um, 100 watt GAN uh, USB-C charger. So it does 100 watts. You know, if you do the first two USB-C ports, it's like 45 and 45 or something. This one's 18, so I can charge my phone and my laptop. The other thing here, everyone needs a travel adapter, right? So you always see those big bulky ones. I really like this Kickerland travel adapter. It's pretty flat, fits in almost every adapter. You can rotate these to go to Australia, things like that. Um, and it just stacks together really nicely. Now, I would not be a good traveler if I did not come with a power bank. Um, I also have a smaller six foot USB-C cable here. Again, it's Anchor, um, capable of delivering 100 watts so I can use these to charge my uh, laptop. So let's move that to the side real quick and let's weigh it. Um, so my tech pouch, so 1.87 pounds for all this, which really isn't too bad. For this, let's say power, I'll call this power, 1.68 pounds. So total, I'm looking at three pounds and 1.2 ounces. So that's really not bad, especially when, I, I mean, most of the stuff I can fit in my pockets if we are at an airline. Pretty happy with that. Also, this will always be my pocket when I fly anyway. All right, next up we have camera gear. This is the travel tripod we'll be taking. I actually got this recommendation from a good friend of ours. This is the Manfrotto Mini, and it's just gotten great, great, great reviews about how durable it is. It's super compact. Um, the legs are pretty stiff, which is great for setting up various angles. You can push this in and this can move around for you. So really great, excited to use it. This will probably be our, you know, the main way we're walking around holding it, filming ourselves. Also have a Osprey ultralight um, toiletry kit, but I really like to use kind of toiletry kits again to see stuff just because of the, the clear panel. And this is only like an ounce or something. So I'm pretty pumped with that. Also, I just waited, I might as well jump to that. So it's one pound, two ounces for the camera gear, obviously not including the camera. Tripod adds another one and a half, a little over, one pound, 9.2 ounces. So let's go through this. There is some stuff I'm not gonna be able to show because it's currently in use. This is a phone adapter. I'm not sure how long it's gonna make it, but it's a 3.5 you know, thread. We can hook it up to our tripods, things like that. I have a GoPro, um, which I'll pull out. This is just the waterproof housing and extra battery. We've got some extra mounts and stuff here. But for the GoPro, um, you actually need a uh, external mic adapter if you want to use something like one of the Rode mics, which we actually have two that I'll show. For the camera I'm filming on right now, which is a uh, Sony RX100 uh, Mark 7. I've just got an extra battery right here. There's obviously one on the camera right now. And then I've got this cool little thing targeted as you're walking around. So battery just pops in right there. Plus it gives me a, kind of a carrying case for one extra battery. This is a windsock. Um, we do have, a, you know, another Rode mic here. This thing is Awesome, it's one of the, I think the Rode Micro Go. I gotta double check that. Um, Windsock just pops right on. This is what we'll probably be using primarily with this camera as we're out and about walking around. Last few things in here, this is the, the mount for the, the Rode that we just looked at. This is one of the other mics. Um, so two of these, so Brie and I can each have one if we wanna do dual channel. Right now I'm using merge channel. So, you know, one mic, one receiver. I've got just like one USB-A to USB-C cord. I just keep it in the camera kit because, you know, that's how we charge the Rode mics. And I just wanna make sure I always have, kind of have one available. Like any good, you know, you know, SD card person, you have to have an SD card reader. So the reason I like this one is I can take the big SDs, small SDs. This actually pulls back and goes from USB-A to micro USB. And then on the other side, it has USB-C. Just an extra 3.5 millimeter uh, aux. Also, I just have this little, you know, Allen wrench. Um, this is for like tightening the case uh, on the GoPro, which I'll pull out in just a second. And we've got these little Peak Design camera clips. So on, on the camera right now, which you can't see, we've got these camera clips. They slide right into the sling strap. This is the Peak Design camera strap we decided to go with. We went with the light. It's just basically like a little bit thinner, um, but these are those uh, straps. So this is kind of where it would hook onto the, the camera. And then when you wanted to plug it in, just slide it like that. And then last but not least is this GoPro. So I'm using the Ulanzi um, aluminum case and we'll use this when we're in the water, uh, maybe on motorbikes. I got the New Bear grip. So I actually had the GoPro tripod for a while, but this thing's pretty sweet because uh, it floats, which is the big thing, right? Bring the scale back over. One pound, 1 1.8 ounces. So again, this is something I could take and just probably shove in my pocket or my jacket pocket if I really need to, to save a pound. I did also take a keyboard, Bluetooth keyboard. It can connect to a couple devices on off switch, 7.2 ounces. I mean, you can't get much better than that. And that's it. I mean, apart from the Sony RX, that's pretty much everything that I'm bringing for camera gear. So it's a lot, I would say, actually, my tech and my camera gear is easily over half my bag, which is kind of ridiculous when I think about it, but we are only taking 40 liters, so it's not too surprising. I'm gonna pack up my camera gear real quick so you can just see what that looks like all packed up. So that's it, that's all the camera gear. All right, toiletries. I feel like this is probably gonna be the most divisive part because I would say I'm a maximalist packer. Hygiene is something that's obviously important. 
um, and I do wear Invisalign, so I have to make extra considerations for that, which is kind of a pain, which I didn't have to when I was younger. So first thing, liquids. I have hair gel, I have sunscreen, I've got some toothpaste, a little thing of uh, shaving cream. This is for mouth sores, which really suck, but hey, it's uh, genetic as far as anyone knows, and they affect a huge majority of people. And then some cologne. So this is just the Traveler, which is like a travel atomizer, which is awesome. All my liquids right in here, packs down pretty small. Ziploc bag, obviously, for TSA. So my liquids, 10 ounces, roughly, with a Ziploc. That's not too bad. I also have deodorant, a toothbrush again, just an Oral-B. Q-tip, self-explanatory. This is a Neutrogena um, face bar. It's in the Matador uh, flat pack soap case. Tongue scraper, pretty self-explanatory. Brought a comb. I don't know how much I'll ever actually use this, but you know, sometimes it's nice to feel like you can style your hair a little bit rather than using your hands. I've got some Sunbum SPF 50. I've got some floss picks. These are mostly for when I fly. Just pop in a bathroom, floss your teeth, rinse it out with water, quickly brush your teeth with just like the head of your electric toothbrush, and then you're able to throw in your retainers without feeling pretty gross. This is floss for the rest of the time. I have another one here. Again, we'll use this up. I just didn't want to waste it. This is bamboo floss, which has actually been pretty good. All right, this was like the holy grail. I feel like I looked at so many different travel razors, and I know this is a big form factor. It's USB-C battery powered, um, so I I can charge this with USB-C. Uh, it's waterproof, but it, I can shave it. I can use it, you know, to you know trim up my sideburn and stuff like that. You know, you just pop off the top here, and uh, it does have like a little head here that you know you can trim up your sideburns or maybe you know cut around the hair around your ears. So it's a bit of a styler too, which is really nice. And I feel like that was really, really, really hard to find. All right, this is like the one and only soap bar. So it's hair, body face, everything. It's from a, a company called 100 Senses. They are awesome. We actually took one of these to Hawaii with us just to try um, between the two of us for only soap bar. We used it for shaving, we used it for our face, we used it for our hair. Uh, everything felt great. You know, I've used Dr. Bronner's before and man, that was just like, it dried out my hair. It dried the crap out of my skin and I was in Southeast Asia, so it was super humid and my skin was still super dry. So I really like this. It's pretty gentle on the skin. Um, not to mention I can use it for shaving, which is really great because I'm sure I'm gonna run out of shaving cream. Last couple things, got, you know, nail clippers. We've got some little pill pouches. I've got an extra set of my retainers. This is a Sea to Summit um, mug, little X cup, but it's silicone, pops out, you can microwave it. The reason that I needed to bring this is because I need to soak my retainers sometimes in a cleaner. I use them with these little Retainer Bright um, tablets. So I have one extra razor head, one extra toothbrush head. I've got a little travel mirror. I've got some acne patches. So I don't know why. I'm like in my 30s, but I still get acne. Don't ask me why. All right, this one is <laughs> kind of funny. Um, I'm not sure if people really care about this because I've, I've never really done it before, but this is a nose hair trimmer, um, but it's a metal one. It's from South Korea. So I don't know if you can see the mechanism, but as you spin, it basically like rips it out as things get caught between those two metal pieces, which is kind of funky. And I guess you're supposed to hold this as you spin it for dexterity. Textured grips. The real cool thing about this, I don't know if you'd say real cool, I'm probably nerding out a little bit, is that it comes with a little brush to clean the top out, screws right in the bottom, which is pretty awesome. Last, last thing, we have some safety scissors. So this is always you know, difficult to bring you know, on airlines, but I'm pretty sure these meet all the requirements, but they're pretty awesome. They fold into nothing. This is kind of used in conjunction with our med kit. We have moleskin and stuff in case we get blisters, things like that. For the actual bag, this is kind of hard to find. This is called the Mini Bomber. It's like this tactical company online that you can find. It's got paracord braided uh, uh, zipper pulls. It's got a uh, YKK AquaGuard uh, zipper right here, which is great. So something um, burst is not going to leak out in your bag. This thing is awesome. This weighs like one ounce. It's made out of X, this kind of like X pack material, kind of like a ripstop nylon actually. This thing is super lightweight. I've used it forever. I actually have used so many different toiletry kits, you know, Eagle Creek, REI, um, Tom Bin. I mean, pick the company. I've tried it. This thing's awesome. It's only 1.2 ounces. That's the toiletry kit. Let's uh, get it all packed up and then we'll weigh it out. I do have to pack everything very specifically, which is actually kind of annoying, but I, I'm sure I'll get used to it. Let's weigh this bad boy. My toiletries are, and this is gonna hurt, three point, well, three pounds, three ounces. That's not bad. So this is my bag of many things. I feel like everyone always has one, just random crap. So I've just got some duct tape here if you ever need to repair a bag. Um, I have an Arctic fan, 
I've got some Yas cards, it's a Swiss card game, but I want to teach Brie while we're, you know, in our van around Iceland. This is just, you know, some extra foam tips for my sunglasses as well <coughs> as my earbuds. I've got this one little, uh, it's like a reusable zip tie. This thing's pretty awesome, it's from Matador. Um, but just in case I ever need to zip tie anything. I dyes little gear ties. I have a little cloth to clean my sunglasses. This is a cool game, so my girlfriend's brother, we went out to visit him and he showed us this game called Left Right Center, which is kind of a gambling game, but it seems like a really good way to get to meet people while you're on the road. This is another set of uh, cards. So I actually backed these on Kickstarter. They're awesome. They're super small, but they're like unterrible. They're waterproof. I love these things. I have a spoon and a fork, a spork, if you will. And I've got a little pocket blanket again from Matador. That's my bag of many things. It's just kind of a random assortment of crap, but you know, they've all kind of earned their place here uh, for better or for worse. You know, I definitely wouldn't remove anything from here. And this ways, 11 ounces, 11 and a half ounces. That's not gonna break the bank at all. Um, packable day pack. Man, I have looked at every single packable day pack that exists. I decided to go with the Matador again. This is the 16 liter packable uh, on grid day pack. This thing is amazing. It just is super comfortable. It doesn't look as kind of goofy as some of the other ones. It has two water bottle pockets, which is important. It's water resistant. There are flaps over the zippers. It has a hydration sleeve, which kind of doubles as a laptop compartment. Just something I can slide it into if I'm walking to a coffee shop or something like that. The shoulder straps aren't like, like a thin mesh or wire that's gonna cut into your shoulder. So just really great. Plus it packs down to basically next to nothing. This thing I love. I just wish I had like a little loop here so I could clip it to the outside sometimes. I don't know if I want to really clip it onto this because I feel like someone could just pull it off. And also weight, 7.2 ounces. Awesome. So laundry, question everyone always has. Key things to note. I've got like a uh, Cedar Summit dry sack with a window. Definitely wanted the window so I could see what I'm washing. Clothing line. Uh, this thing's pretty awesome. It's got a little clip here to hang on one side button, the whole line fits in there. It's it's pretty large. We've used this before. It's super lightweight, super amazing. This is how we'll dry our clothes in a hotel room. And then Cedar Summit, again, another Boulder company, Trek and Travel. This is their uh, pocket laundry wash. So you just throw one of these tabs in here with like some warm water and then it kind of suds up. The whole thing is 3.5 ounces. That's, that's our laundry machine. You know, that's pretty cool. Rain jacket. Man, I went back and forth on this forever. This is the Outdoor Research Helium 2. So it's it's one of the lightest ones uh, for the value. I mean, there are lighter ones like the Arcteryx, but the price is just, I just couldn't justify it. So um, this thing's really great. It packs down into its own pocket. It doesn't have pockets. It's one of the reasons it's so light. It does have a chest zip though. So you can like throw something in there, but you can't get your hands out of the rain. Super lightweight, 6.3 ounces. All right, last couple things to go over. This is just my buff. Um, it's, you know, Cool Max one. It's super lightweight. It's not Merino. I had a Merino one, but I wanted one that's UPF 50 rated if I want to use it as kind of a sun hat. It's also protected with insecta shield. So it'll keep bugs away. Mosquitoes this is mostly for Southeast Asia. I also have just a bandana, Blink-182, one of my favorite bands. Um, this is just to cover my eyes when I sleep. I just roll it up like this rather than bringing an eye mask, it packs down flatter. Plus I can use it as a handkerchief. Nano towel, so this is my travel towel. It's super small. This thing is amazing though. Doesn't smell, packs down super small. Love this thing, best purchase ever. This is actually part of a Cedar Summit tech kit. Um, but you know, it's got my passport, some money in here. I just wanted a clear window again to see what's in there. It's just got some euros and dollars. All right, so last but not least, um, the thing that I feel like most people care about are what kind of clothes did you bring, especially when you're only taking a backpack. So we've actually been on the road for a bit now. We're filming this a little after the fact. There was a bit of trial and error that went on with our clothing. And the stuff I'm wearing now, for example, is actually being shipped home. We're in Munich right now. Um, and some of the stuff is still under debate. But I'm going to go through what we brought and we'll take it from there. So the first thing that you see is my pack and cube. This contains all of the clothing that I brought on this trip and I specifically limited myself just to one pack and cube um, just for minimalist purposes. Plus this is a pretty large pack and cube. It's the peak design medium. The reason I went with this pack and cube over all of the other ones, I mean, they're all great and you can't really go wrong. You can just use a plastic bag as well. But the reason I went with this one specifically it's just, it's really well thought out. I actually really like this company, Peak Design. They're like a kind of a camera focused company out in the Bay Area and they make just really quality products. This thing's very durable. You'll see right now that I actually have it expanded, but there's a zipper that goes around that compresses everything. Um, but this is just a really fine mesh that lets all the clothes breathe so you know they don't get smelly sitting in a cube the whole time. Another important feature for me is uh, this little zipper right here opens up to a dirty side. You'll see a lot of laundry cubes, uh, as they call them now, coming out that have a place to put your dirty laundry so it doesn't sit with your clean clothes. And this is no exception, it's just, 
one zipper here and then the piece of fabric that's the bottom of the main packing cube just separates them um, but it's a nice little addition I can always just unzip this and grab my dirty clothes out uh, whenever I need to wash them or whenever we're in your laundry. Last cool thing about the Peak Design Cube, you'll notice that it's not one zipper that goes all the way around, it's these two, and it doesn't actually ever fully close. Uh, hopefully the camera's picking this up, but there are these two little rubber tabs here, and it has this cool pull apart feature. So whenever I get somewhere, I can just go like that, grabbing these tabs, and the cube will just open right up and I've got all my clothes. Without further ado, what's in the cube? So first things first, I've got a Herculean t-shirt here. Brie actually found this company, um, and bought the shirt first before me. I was very surprised that she beat me to finding a piece of travel gear, but seeing the quality of the goods and really liking kind of what the company stood for, I went out and bought one too. And I really like this shirt. It's super comfortable. It's one of my favorite like lounging shirts. Um, the one thing that gave me pause about this t-shirt is that they said it's not really good for sweating a lot. And for anyone who knows me, I sweat more than any other human being on this planet. So I was a little worried about taking it uh, to Europe and Asia, specifically because uh, we're gonna be in Europe in the summer and we're gonna be in Asia, which is just never cool, basically, uh, specifically Southeast Asia. So that being said, I brought it. This might not make the cut, um, but I'm not entirely too sure yet. I do really like it. Great quality t-shirt. I like that uh, it never smells. I mean, I wore this thing for a week straight, basically just testing it out when we got it just to see if it really lived up to its claims. And it basically does. It kind of has this metallic odor and they do say they weave like copper fiber into it. That's part of the reason it, it's antimicrobial. So really great t-shirt, would highly recommend it. Yes, they're expensive, but you don't really need many more than just a couple of these, honestly, especially if you're going to more milder climates. For hotter climates though, I would recommend linen. And speaking of linen, I have these two button downs. So I actually tried a bunch of different button downs. Uh, I liked a bunch of them, but I ended up leaving them just because some of them were too fancy um, and I didn't want to ruin them or I feel like they just didn't fit me well. Anyway, we get to Italy, it's 100 degrees outside. Everyone around me is wearing linen. So we went to uh, a store nearby, we picked up two linen shirts and I totally get why. I wore them every single day throughout 21 days in Italy. It's just super lightweight, it dries very quickly. Uh, button downs in particular are great because you can just unbutton more of it if you need more airflow. So these are definitely making the cut and I'm definitely taking them to Southeast Asia. I have the Pistol Lake, I'm gonna butcher the name, Uday shirt uh, right here. It's like a new proprietary fabric. So Pistol Lake kind of got big doing like tensile blends. Um, the owner is pretty big on Reddit. He's a super nice guy. I talked to him a few times, but I'm gonna end up shipping this one home just because I don't need two of them. Um, I feel like they're super thin and they're very light and comfortable, uh, but because they're super thin, if you even glisten, <laughs> Um, the moisture shows up in here. So I really just like the green one. Uh, I probably don't need two though, especially just because I, I can cut down and save some weight. Um, I'm just gonna keep this one, but I love it. It's one of my favorite t-shirts and it was a last minute purchase and I absolutely adore them. Here I've got the Woolen Prince V-neck. This is probably one of the most talked about brands in kind of like the one bagging community because they were one of the first ones to really do nice looking merino wool clothing in my opinion. What's kind of unique about them is that it's not just 100% merino wool. It's 78% uh, merino and 22% nylon. And the reason that's important is that merino is notorious for uh, being a little brittle. It can, you know, pill very easily and, and get holes worn in it, depending on the abrasiveness of maybe your backpack. Um, adding that nylon filament to the to the fabric uh, actually makes it a much more durable. I feel like it drapes better. Um, it doesn't really harm its uh, antimicrobial uh, properties at all. So really love this thing. It's a Henley. It just looks good. I can kind of dress it up. All right, almost done with tees. So here I've got this um, Cool Life t-shirt here. I actually didn't think I was gonna bring it. It was also a last minute purchase, but I actually really loved it. It's a great like gym shirt. I love wearing it around. It's woven with um, like a metal thread kind of, or has metal woven into it, something like that. Um, and it kind of feels metallic to the touch. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it does feel cool constantly. And I really like this t-shirt. I think it looks really good on me too. It's a little athletic. You can, you know, the seams are very visible. There's one big seam going down the back. So, you know, you're not gonna get away uh, maybe wearing it to a nicer place or it's not like you're going out shirt, but um, um, great for the gym, great for walking around. Really like this thing. Last but not least, I already talked about this brand. This is Herclown. Um, they had a gym shirt that I saw uh, after I really liked their sh uh, their regular t-shirt. 
So I went out and got their gym shirt and I love this thing. It uh, just fits me really well. Um, super comfortable, packs down really small. Again, that anti-odor property, which is kind of nice to have in a gym shirt, especially when they tend to be like, um, you know, synthetics, polyester, um, that smell really easily in my experience. So love this thing. We've gone in the gym a couple times so far and I've worn this every single time and I absolutely love it. Okay, underwear. I'm not gonna touch uh, too heavily on this. I'll just note that um, Ex Officio have been my go-to since 2013. I brought four pair to Asia or five pair to Asia um, and I've never looked back. They're amazing, I love them. I picked up some more from Costco. Um, the only addition I made here is I grabbed two from Uniqlo. These are their uh, super light Airism uh, brands and I love them, they just pack down to nothing. So uh, I just wanted to sneak in two extra pair because I like to have a little extra underwear, who doesn't? But I didn't want to, you know, take up too much more room in the um, in the packing cube. And you can tell the size difference between these two. I mean, one just packs down so small. Pants. This is probably like the hottest debated subject in the one bagging community. Like, what what pants should you bring? And obviously, you're gonna have your preferences. There's so many brands that I could recommend, but the ones personally that worked best for me are the Western Rise Evolution pants. They pack down to basically nothing and it's just a really good look. I love the fabric. It's not too swishy as the technical materials tend to be. And I love them so much, I actually bought the Evolution short as well, uh, which I have a friend bringing to me because I, I really missed having a pair of non-gym shorts like these to, to walk around in. So uh, definitely love Western Rise. They're a great company based out of Telluride, Colorado. Go check out their stuff. The only other pair of pants that I have, um, these are the Patagonia Terrebonne joggers, and I love these things. They're some of the lightest joggers I could find. They're great for lounging around in. They have a zippered back pocket again if you are worried about security. Um, whenever we work from hotel rooms or if we're just lounging or we're going to breakfast or something, I just throw these on. Um, we debated heavily on whether I should send them back, but I just love them so much. I think they're gonna make the cut uh, just because they're so comfortable. Shorts, okay. So I'm wearing a pair right now. These are the 10,000 tactical shorts. My brother actually turned me on to them. Um, he said they were super comfortable. And the thing I really liked about the tactical shorts are that they have two zippered pockets. Just that extra sense of security is really nice. So these are them in black. They're the exact same ones, which is why I'm sending the green ones back. I don't need to. They are a little bit heavier. This waistband is pretty heavy duty with this drawstring. I wish I could kind of cut this off or save some weight somehow, but whatever. These are probably my favorite shorts that I've worn and I've tried a lot of shorts. Last but not least, bathing suit. But the thing I really like about this bathing suit in particular, and this is the Seagal short, it's a French company, um, so you do have to pay a little bit extra for shipping and it does take a while, are that they actually look, you know, kind of normal. I mean, you can hear it's a swimsuit material. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear that from here. But it has a built-in liner, which I really like in my kind of board shorts. Um, a little drawstring here so you can tie them to keep them tight. But from the front, they've got this little button uh, and it looks like just regular swim shorts. They don't dry incredibly quickly, I think because of that thick inner liner, but um, they're amazing and I, I think they're the best swim shorts that I've tried so far. All right, last but not least, socks. This is just the easiest part of this whole video. Get darn tough, save yourself the headache. They're the best ones out there. Really straightforward. All this fits in the packing cube and it probably comes in at just a couple pounds, maybe three or four pounds. Okay, so that's what I'm wearing on my body or the upper half of my body. For shoes, this is the hardest thing. There is no one shoe, so I've made do with two. I started out with three. I left a white pair of sneakers in Switzerland just because the reality is they just add a lot of weight, take up a lot of space, and they're just not that worth it. I live and die by rainbow sandals. Um, these are the sandals of the beach, you know, the ones I grew up wearing in Florida. And uh, I wear these every single day. So, I mean, even when it's raining, I've worn them in the rain. Um, but these are the number one shoe of traveling. It's what I wore last time too, and I don't see why I should change that now. Actual shoe. Um, I've got these on cloud fives. These are amazing Swiss company. So I figured I'd try them out, but they're super comfortable. They're very lightweight. I like a wider toe box. Um, they don't make my feet feel as cramped. I like these elastic ties so I can tighten them up if I want to do some physical activity or I can just keep them light. Um, I just threw in some new insoles cause I knew we'd be walking a lot. Uh, mine had gotten pretty worn down while I was trying them out. So, uh, absolutely love these things. You know, I mean, they're not going to win you style points at a nice dinner, but who cares? You know, you're, a tourist. They're gonna take your money no matter what, um, but they're super comfortable for long distances. I wore them hiking, I wore them to the gym, and then other than that I just wore my sandals. Alright, that's it for my one bag. Um, I know I posted a list on the website. I'm gonna try and update that uh, with, you know, everything I've kind of gotten rid of, um, just so you can get an accurate representation of what I'm carrying right now. Um, I love talking about this stuff. I poured years of research into every single piece 
uh, that I'm carrying and I need people to know that it's not a requirement, it's just a hobby for me so I, I enjoy doing it. But if anyone has any questions about particular gear or why'd you take this over that or have you tried this, I probably have, write a comment below, um, let us know what you're, what you're wondering and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.